Привет всем. Сегодня мы пригласили э, к нам в гости прекрасных шотландцев в прекрасных килтах, э, которые нам расскажут о своих, так сказать, поездках сюда в Россию. Они музыканты, о чем они тоже скажут. Играют здесь уже практически каждый год, то есть как на работу сюда ездят. Дело в том, что будет речь идти про бал. Бал, который организует на самом деле Улем Хаки Джонс. У меня был выпуск с ним в серии РЧВ. Я на всякий случай помещу описание в ссылке под этим видео. Соответственно, я буду задавать вопросы, они будут отвечать. Вопросы иногда будут идиотские, я не скрываю этого, потому что мы не так много знаем о Шотландии на самом деле, но тем не менее. Так что вперед, узнаем сейчас массу интересного. So, well, is it your first time you visit Russia? No. Okay. What was your first impression about Russia? Well, the first time we came was for the Caledonian Ball in 1998, uh, so quite a while ago. Um, um, and uh, we were much younger, and uh, I think St. Petersburg was very different uh, then as well. Um, so it was quite, I, I thought it was fascinating, just the kind of cultural differences. And Well, actually, the first thing was probably the getting the visas, because we, we only had about two or three weeks notice in that first year. Well, um, yeah. and, uh, I, I, I suppose it's a very hard thing to get Russian visa. Not, <laughs> not, not that first year. The, the first year, I, um, I, the organizers of the ball apparently had some very high up politicians going there. And they said, go into the consulate in Edinburgh and ask them for um, about the visas. And if there's any problems, phone me. So I went in and they were like, oh, we can't do that. So I phoned somebody and I... A few minutes later, the phone in the consulate went. Someone went over, picked up the phone, turned sheet white, came back, and gave us visas. Well, uh, <laughs> because I know the organizer who organized that ball. Actually, uh, one of the guy, he's from England. His name is William Hackett Jones. Yes, mm -hmm. we know. Yep. Yeah. So that's why you didn't have any problem at yeah. all. But usually, especially in the USA, well, it's a, it's kind of quest. Mm -hmm. To yeah. get. These, days, these days it seems much easier to get yeah. the visas than it used to do. Okay, so it was 1998 and uh, yeah, we call that time uh, crazy 90s <laughs> because it was right after the fall of the Soviet Union, yeah. uh, Perestroika and uh, crazy 90s and then uh, uh, to, uh, 2000 this 10 years it's uh, all in oil a lot of money and uh, and now I don't know what uh, what is going for them okay so uh, but you did have some impression from your media probably about Russia because my blog is about the image of Russia mm. in uh, Europe in the USA and usually it's very bad uh, mm. because of some movies because of some TV series yeah. and such. So, uh, what was about Russia before you visiting that? Honestly, please. We had no idea. I mean, <laughs> it was it was just as you said. We we had been we had we'd seen what we'd seen from the media or from the TV, and the, uh, as you say, the, with with all the stuff that had been going on with the, with the, with the Russia sort of slowly opening up and and all the changes that were going on, we really didn't have a clue what we were going to find. But when we did come here, I mean, as Mark said, we were so young, we were just wandering around aimlessly, just looking at the, going down Nevsky or, 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 or seeing the architecture, just because we didn't have a clue. Although we weren't allowed out on our own generally, uh, no, so yes, we, we yes. always tended to have somebody with us. Mm -hmm. and, and, and at that time, um, there were um, lots of people who were studying English, mm -hmm. um, the English speaking union, and they um, gave us guides. Mm -hmm. So uh, there was these kind of, I suppose, older, I mean, 18, 19, 20 year old girls who were basically showing us around um, and taking us to museums and various places. And, um, and that was, yeah, it was fun. We saw a lot. What was, what is uh, about Russia that you like and that you don't like? Hmm, interesting. Um, I love going to places that are distinctly culturally different. One of the things I find with traveling, particularly around Europe, um, you know, so many places you go, and um, it kind of feels not particularly different. It might be a slightly different language, um, but I like, I love seeing a different culture that seems, you know, distinctly different. And I think in some ways these days it feels less culturally different 
um, than it used to, but I still think there's something very interesting about that, so I really enjoy it. The other really interesting thing about Russia, well, if you talk about Russians, yeah. um, it's very, very interesting to start with. You, you, when, when you first meet people, there is this impression of, of quite kind of cold and quite, it'll take a long time to get to know people and you don't smile very much because if yeah. you smile, you, it suggests that you're, you're stupid. We, we must look very stupid. <laughs> we smile all the time. So and that's just, I like, Besides, hold on. you're wearing <laughs> that, so And you're wearing kilts, yeah. So you walk along the street smiling to everybody and, and Russians don't do that. Um, but, um, and uh, you know, a, a good example, um, I think it was about the second year we were here, uh, we went into a bar and it was like a, an American movie, you know, you open the door and there was music, there was t everybody was talking and we walked in like uh, Scottish people with instruments, we walked, the, all the music stopped, everything stopped, everybody looked at us, we kind of like, okay, we went up and we put our things down, we went to the bar and we were like, do you speak English? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, vodka? Da. Vodka. Okay, and we sat down and we started, we, we were just sort of talking and then we thought, should we play some music? So we got out our instruments and we started playing some tunes. And um, we, they, they sort of looked over and, and that was okay. And then this big Russian guy came over to the table and uh, put a hand on my shoulder like this. And looked very serious. And I was like, we're going to get thrown out, we're going to get arrested, what's going to happen? And he went, got a bottle of vodka, put it down on the table, boom. <laughs> and went off. Not a word of English, not a word of Russian, but you know, music and um, uh, yeah, appreciation. It was good. It was, it was very good. But they're so warm. You know, when you get to know people, they're so warm, so welcoming, so friendly. The ball is a lovely atmosphere. Um, and a lot of the people we've gone around with, like, you know, um, Anna and William and, and you know, the, the whole uh, group, it's, they're, very, um, they're very welcoming. And, and other Russians that we meet are always very welcoming and friendly as well, which is fantastic. Is it your natural English or you try to uh, say English English? Because, uh, well, I, I, don't, I don't get any Scottish accent from you. No. Uh, we, we, have, we have a mild accent. I mean, yeah. Marx is stronger. Probably a wee bit stronger than some. Um, yeah, you got, yeah, but... You, yeah. You, no. The, Mike, um, you find different parts. The accents are very strong yeah. and change very rapidly in Scotland. Yeah. So we have... Um, you know, you can travel 10 miles and people sound different. Because uh, as soon as I know, uh, some of parts are very similar to Russian language because you have sound like R. Yeah. R. Then you have some sound like not T but T. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, it's like a Russian language, so th that's why when I hear some uh, Scottish accent, uh, I, I think that for some Russians, it's easy to get this particular accent yeah. because you don't have to change uh, a lot. Okay, so uh, you come here uh, very often now, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yes. So yeah. Well, can, can you, annual. Can, can you describe uh, because? Can you describe the change of, con of the country, of the city, of St. Petersburg? Well, because uh, you know uh, what it was in uh, 1998, and now we have, well, uh, 10 years past. Well, what changed for you? I mean, I think our experience, particularly of the, the ball that we've been playing, um, one of the things we really noticed when we first came, it was very, very elite. You know, it was it was the political elite and the, you know, all the very well-to-do people yeah. about the ball. You know, it was obviously a very, and there seemed to be that huge sort of divide between those with money. No democracy and, in the society. Yeah, the and I, I think that's because we we came for I think four or five years from '98, and then we didn't come for about ten or more years, and then we come again for five years um, or four or five years and I think that's the thing I really noticed when we came started to come back four or five years ago was just um, it was such a more sort of varied country um, everything from the cars in the street I mean I remember us first time I came just sitting watching like kind of either completely beaten up ladders or Mercedes and that's all you know nothing else just that kind of one or the other um, and people that came out to something like the ball these days, you know, there's students, there's all sorts of people. It's much more about going out and enjoying a party in a fancy place that everyone would do. Uh, can we say that uh, it, uh, it becomes much more European? Because uh, 
No? No, I think it, I, I still think there's a big cultural difference. No, I, I mean, uh, not, not, a, not about the cultural difference, because uh, Russia in the 90s, for, for instance, was quite divided. Mm. It was uh, the class of so new Russians, for instance, yeah, uh, of, of rich people who uh, like to wear some sort of things, you know, and, and such. Now you can go along the streets and uh, you can see a guy, well, he's dressed maybe poorly, but he's very rich. Yeah. Uh, we get the idea that you don't have to show off. Mm. You know, mm, yeah. you, 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 you can you know, wear a t-shirt and, uh, and it's cool yeah. and it's fine. Uh, maybe, uh, mm, and that, that is, uh, I call European mm. style of uh, pursuing the, the world. Maybe that. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so, okay, uh, well, uh, it's about the ball, but uh, probably about the city, about the country. Well, uh, uh, have you noticed some, you know, changes or something like? It's a lot. Um, when, when we came er early on, we went out of the city a little bit as well. Um, there was a, uh, they call themselves a, a, a drinking club with a running problem that um, we uh, associated with and ended up going out to run. Um, and, uh, and so you'd go out of the city and very quickly when you left the city, you'd get into farmland and, and actually quite often dirt roads as well. The roads were very poorly kept and, and, mm, yeah. and there was a lot of the mud from the, the, the smaller roads that was brought back into the city. So the, the roads were very dirty. The city was quite dirty because the cars were bringing in um, all this and, and all that's gone. I think the city has expanded. There's lots of new um, uh, bl blocks of flats, not lots of new housing. Um, and, and so the city is much bigger and also the roads are better and the infrastructure is better and you don't have all that, you know, sort of the, the dirt coming in, it takes longer to get out of the city. So I guess it's busier. Um, as you say, the cars are different, um, the shops are different. The personalities are different a bit as well. I think the, we were talking about this just, just earlier, the, the confidence of people seems, you know, people seem a lot more self-assured and confident and you know, I think I remember. I remember sort of when I first came, um, kind of looking around and kind of. I think because we're kind of used, we're you know we're used to business. Um, you know, I run my own businesses and I'm quite used to that kind of entrepreneurship. And you saw so many things that were like, there's an opportunity to make a lot of money there, but no one seems to do it. And now it seems I think people have got the confidence there, and, and just even talking to people, you know, there's a sort of walking along the street there's a, a more self-assured confidence to people particularly the women i think uh, well let's change uh, the subject how would you describe the typical scottish man <laughs> <laughs> well in your in your eyes <laughs> go for call not typical, I would say, would be the best way of describing yeah. it. <laughs> uh, major types, maybe. Major types of... Uh... Oh, as was any, any place, there, 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 are, there are as many different types of people as there are people on the earth, you know. But, but Scotsmen are normally very uh, welcoming, normally quite generous, normally enjoy going out and, and, and having fun. They enjoy company and, and having all the you know, a, a good life, really, you know, just as most other people would. There's nothing particularly special about Scottish Scots people. Are quite proud, a lot of Scots are very proud of their country, um, which I think is something, I always think that's one of the differences between Scotland and England in a way. I think there's a sort of a national pride quite often about okay. the country. I'm going to ask you stupid questions, but we, we don't know um, much in Russia about, you know, this difference between England and uh, you know, your country, but if you would describe for a guy who doesn't know anything, major differences between Englishmen and Scotland, well, which are they? <laughs> I think, I mean, again, being very stereotypical, yeah. uh, um, but um, there's, there's something, um, a lot of English people would call themselves British. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know, there's that kind of the sort of British colonialism, you know, that that still I think still stereotypically because that kind of you know still remains in that culture, and I think Scotland in many ways not completely, but there's more of a tendency to rather than identify with owning the world to identify with your little corner. 
<laughs> we've, we've fought hard to keep an identity as, as not just as a Great Britain, but as Scotland. Um, whereas the English have, it's not that they don't have an identity, it's that they haven't got the same sort of cultural references that we have, as, as, you know, the, the Cayleys and stuff like that. A very objective marker, actually. Recently, um, there was a map um, of Brexit votes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know if you've seen this. Uh, well, um, no, so this but is, I've heard about it. So this is who wants to leave um, the European Union, and Scotland did not want to leave. So Scotland, Brexit vote, no. Uh, Northern Ireland, Brexit vote, no. Uh, I think Wales was possibly no as well. I can't remember. It was a bit, bit. Um, but England, um, apart from London. London. A bit around London. Uh, it was yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's a very interesting remark, actually. Uh, but you know, uh, you particularly live in one country because you're very small. Well, in our, in our yeah, yeah, we are very <laughs> small country. Yeah. yeah. But well, football, different. Yeah. You know, but mm. yeah. you know, uh, do you have now your own parliament? Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Your own in. Um, not in Edinburgh, in Edinburgh, yeah, in Edinburgh, yeah, yeah. I've been there for a couple of hours, actually. It's a nice city, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the building of Parliament was built by some Spaniards. Yeah, Spaniards. So, well, all the stuff is different, but you live in in one country, and when you go out. And uh, some, uh, some guys say, uh, well, can you say about you that you're Brit, for no, instance? I no. Some Scots would, I wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah, I'm quite comfortable yeah. being British yeah. as well. I, I would always identify as Scottish first, yeah. Brit British second. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I am, I am British, but right. if somebody were to ask me, where do you come from, I would say Scotland. Yeah, but, but you quite happily say Scottish, British, European, global. Isn't, it's kind it, of not isn't it irritating for some uh, Englishmen? that you feel uh, from a different part, while you leave just, uh, well, right uh, the I, corner. I find it more interesting that I often find English people, it's almost they get, I tend to get more of a sort of, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll go, oh, I'm British, and I'll go, I'm Scottish, and I'm like, what's, what's the difference? Mm -hmm. You know. Or, or, um, or the other thing. But I think, sorry, I, I think the other thing is particularly for us, and for as we play our Scottish traditional music, which is very, distinct from English music and the traditions, you know, we're much more linked with Irish and a lot of that music and that Celtic kind of side of things, which isn't really there in England. And I think as someone who spends my life being a, a musician playing that, that kind of, in a way, builds your, you know, your cultural identity around my job. Mm -hmm. But the other thing about, about identifica identification with a country is that quite often people who don't understand Britain and how it works will identify everybody as English. Yeah. And, yeah. and that, that yeah. is it's really it's definitely not English. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Scottish yeah. or British that is, is OK. That is what I'm talking English. about. English. <laughs> no. If somebody says, oh, you're English, then no, no. most definitely no. not. We, <laughs> we speak English. We do not speak American. <laughs> we speak English, but we are not English. Okay, so, uh, about your music, well, uh, it's pipes, yeah, we, we have, we, we, um, but in general opinion it's pipes, some, uh, sometimes, and, uh, well, uh, I'm going to continue to ask stupid questions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> as long as you don't mind stupid answers, it's fine. <laughs> so, um, about your kilts. Mm -hmm. uh, is it true that uh, initially you don't have to wear anything under your guilt? Yeah? Socks? <laughs> you have to sign the official secrets act. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, if we are going to. Uh, um, if you look a Russian girl and uh, we go from, uh, from your country. How would you describe the major difference between them? Hmm. Russian girls put off all, seem to be very, I'd say, very um, appearance conscious of their appearance. You know, the the amount of makeup and yeah, there's a lot of, of uh, like Scottish girls who are too, but not 
everybody here it seems to be all, like everybody yeah. everybody is thin pretty you know the younger girls a um, lot of makeup a lot of kind of uh, care in their appearance uh-huh. it's very very rare I can't think of anybody that we've met maybe we don't meet the ones who are I, I don't know it's just you don't notice Mike <laughs> 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 but it, yeah, the, there, there does seem to be this this thing of uh, about appearance more so than um, in Scotland, I think. Okay, guys. Uh, well, uh, actually, uh, I've got uh, all that I wanted, and uh, well, uh, say a couple of words about uh, your band, uh, about your music, uh, and so. Yeah, so we um, we play mostly for Scottish Kayleigh dancing, which is our kind of social dancing. Um, and there's a, a long tradition of, of, of that dancing in Scotland, um, a lot of the old traditional tunes, but we've kind of made a bit of a twist on that. So we have a lot of the traditional style of music and dancing, but also blend in kind of rock music, funk and bits of jazz. And, Is it um, your job or hobby? Um, we, I do music full time, but various, not just with this band, with various things. And, uh, sort of the sound production. These guys as well. Um, we all get paid for our music, but also, you know, have day jobs as well. Some other day jobs. So. Okay, I wish you success. Thank you very, <laughs> thank you very much. Oh, thank That's you for coming. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for asking me. Yeah. Yeah. Вот такие позитивные парни из Шотландии ломают стереотипы об этих самых парнях из Шотландии, особенно если вы читали Ирона Уолша. Ну или пытались, например, смотреть фильм на игре в оригинале. Это, конечно, занятие такое не из самых простых, потому что очень много непонятного из того, что там произносится. Здесь как раз был, ну, такой, я почему и задал вопрос, вполне себе британский английский. Я хочу вам сказать и напомнить, что 2 марта будет примерный концерт остро-социального ансамбля ОСА Уби Пауэрхаус в Москве. И примерно... Плюс-минус там даты, будет еще концерт в Нижнем Новгороде и Петербурге. Следите за анонсами на моем канале и на страницах в социальных сетях. Будут все полюбившиеся треки и кое-что новое. Ссылка на покупку билетов, которые онлайн будут дешевле, чем на входе, находится в описании под этим видео. Также набирается последняя группа перед сезоном э, поездка в Париж 25 марта, если вам интересно, я скину все подробности. И... Есть возможность приехать в город Петербург в конце февраля или в начале марта организованной толпою на три дня. Поселиться здесь, погулять со мной в пятницу, субботу, воскресенье и отвалить. Ну или остаться уже самостоятельно, провести время. Опять-таки пишите мне, вышли все подробности. На этом все. Оставляйте комментарии вот там. Увидимся в следующем выпуске. Пока.